If you live in the Pacific Northwest, you know there is a lot of concern, effort, and investment in reversing the decline of our salmon and steelhead. What if there was something that could really help salmon make a comeback? Well, there is. Welcome to the Riparian Zone. Our beloved salmon and steelhead are most vulnerable when they are young, and water quality in rivers where salmon hatch and grow is critical. Think of it like a nursery for baby fish. And it turns out that the banks of our rivers have a huge impact on water quality. We call the land and trees adjacent to the water riparian zones, and when left undeveloped, these natural areas play a huge role in creating healthy habitat for fish. Trees and shrubs in the riparian zone provide shade that helps keep the water cool, and insects from the zone are a great food source for young fish. Fallen trees help slow strong currents and create safe places for fish to hide and rest. Vegetation keeps banks stable, so soil won't erode and muddy up the water during high flows, which can smother salmon eggs. The zone also filters out chemicals and pollutants that may be seeping through the watershed, helping to reduce river contamination. In the past, we haven't really taken care of these areas, and it's a major reason why salmon and steelhead populations continue to decline today. So just how wide should a riparian zone be? Good question. Well, it varies per watershed, but as a general rule, the zone should be as wide as the height of the dominant tree species at full maturity. These areas then need to be protected forever. It may sound like a lot to ask, but if we can all work together to restore and protect riparian zones, we can create a powerful resource to save our salmon and steelhead for future generations.